Missouri State University campus, Cable 36 presents 2002 SMS Bears football. Tonight, in the season opener, it's the Bears against the Tigers of East Central University. We welcome you to another season of Southwest Missouri State Bears football tonight at the Plaster Sports Complex on a warm August evening just before Labor Day weekend gets underway. And tonight, the SMS Bears embark upon another season of gridiron action as they open against an NCAA Division II opponent, the Tigers of East Central. We welcome you once again to Plaster. My name's Don West. We're joined by Mike McClure for this fall of SMS Bears football this season here on Cable 36. And the Bears and the Tigers get set to go at it in the Bears season opener for 2002. And Mike, the excitement is back for another season of Bears football. Don, I still remember the smiles on the places, players, on the faces of the players last year for SMS after that last game when won the ball game, finished six and five, broke the string of four straight years of five and six. The Bears have won four in a row, dating back to last year. Expectations are very, very high for this 2002 football team. A lot of question marks, however. Had to win those last four games at one time, two and five, in October last year, but won four straight to get it to their first winning season since 96. And we're going to see two quarterbacks tonight, Pete Darnell for East Central, Ryan Porter for SMS, both making their first collegiate starts at quarterback. You know the butterflies have got to be churning in their bellies. But it's... Some of the most exciting times of these young men's lives, too, yeah. because in the case of uh, some of the Bears, like uh, Ryan Porter, who gets his first start tonight after backing up Austin Mockerman last year, his first uh, really big-time collegiate start, and uh, he's got to have the butterflies. I loved his honesty. He said this is truly a dream come true for him. It's something he's dreamed about since he was a little boy, and he's flat-out called this the most exciting day of his life. You have to love the enthusiasm of Ryan Porter. And a familiar face coaches East Central, Dennis Darnell, an SMS bear from the late 60s under the Jim Metis right. administration. A 1969 graduate of SMS, he lettered as an offensive lineman. He was the center for the Bears in 1966, 67, 68. He is a native of El Dorado Springs, Missouri. As we've talked about, his son is the quarterback, and it is his wife, the head coach's wife's birthday today. <laughs> so. And he said a lot of folks from El Dorado Springs were going to be making the trip to Springfield to see him coach tonight. And the fourth year for Randy Ball at the helm of Southwest Missouri State after a couple of five and six seasons. And then last year, six and five, it's really a critical year for him. The only man who has coached in the Gateway Football Conference continuously since the league began in 1985. Obviously the winningest head coach in Gateway Football Conference history as the Bears take the field. I really have just been looking forward to this night for a long, long time. I'm glad it's finally football season. Going back to Randy's days at Western Illinois before moving to Southwest Missouri State. A great coach there, here as well. And there is Dennis Darnell, the East Central head coach. As Mike said, a native of El Dorado Springs. Played on some good teams for Jim Metis in the late uh, 1960s. East Central, a good ball club. Six and four last year, four and two in the Lone Star Conference. And in their last game, which they were defeated, they had a chance to win their conference, but lost their last regular season game a year ago. They were national champions in 1993 when they were an NAIA school, East Central team. And uh, last year when they went six and four was their first uh, or their best year since that uh, championship season. So Dennis Darnell, who is a former uh, Division 1A assistant right. coach, uh, among other things, has, uh, has his program going in the right direction. One of the things I love about this year's SMS football team, you know, a lot of times at the end of practice or something, you might get together and then yell in unison like, gateway champs or some goal at the end of the year. All this bunch says is, get better. They are going to play first, and they will talk later. And I, I really love that about this football team. And there's always room to get better, and it all starts tonight on a warm August evening at the Plaster Sports Complex, the Southwest Missouri State Bears, and the East Central University Tigers out of Ada, Oklahoma. We'll kick off Bears football 2002 right after this. We are set to go. Bears football 2002 ready to get underway, and the SMS Bears will be kicking to East Central to get the 2002 campaign going here this evening. Brian Long back to kick the ball away for the Bears. And it's going to be downed in the end zone. And East Central will bring it out to the 20-yard line. Stephen Langford puts it down back in the end zone. The East Central University Tigers will come out with a Lone Star Conference last year. And it's given up the middle on the first 
play for a five-yard carry. And it is going to be a five-yard pickup, second and five. That was Willie Lane, the ball. Johnson at the safeties, and we'll get a little more in-depth on them as we move along. Here's a little cut-in pattern intended for Stephen Lang Stephen, excuse me, a Langford, and it's incomplete. It'll be second and five. Darnell last year, limited time at quarterback, just 9 of 14 passing, 151 yards and one touchdown, carried the ball 12 times for 25 yards. So as we said, he's going to come out a little tight tonight, and that was not a very clean pass to Langford to set up third down. Out of a shotgun and split backs behind Darnell. And the pitch goes to Jerome Castleberry. One of the leaders in the Lone Star Conference, but he is snowed under by a pack of bears well short of the first down. And East Central goes three and will have to punt. That's linebacker Daryl Robinson. He is the only player from Pennsylvania on the SMS squad this year. He was a medical red shirt last year. He's a 6'1", 220-pound junior. East Central punting after its first three offensive plays. Jose Ramirez is the kicker. And the Bears have Anthony Sullivan back deep. And Sullivan takes it at the 35, 40, and up to the 41. And good field position for the Bears for their first offensive scheme behind junior quarterback Ryan Porter. And a look at the SMS Bears offense. A red shirt at the University of Washington, Nathan Skirman and Eddie Linscombe who rushed for 984 yards a year ago. And here is Linscombe on the first play. Look out, the first play of the season has Linscombe to the 20 and run out of bounds at the 15-yard line. About a 44-yard run for Eddie Linscombe on the first play from scrimmage, and what a hole right up the middle. Great blocking by Crockett Ladd and John Zweigert particularly, as we see Eddie Linscombe down the near sideline, finally chased out of bounds by Wade Boyles, who is the fastest player on the East Central team. Linscombe's goal this year, rush for 2,000 yards. <laughs> Look out. Everyone would love to see it. It would. Linscombe, again, is going to be stacked up at the line of scrimmage this time, and a pretty good East Central defensive unit takes him down, anchored by Justin Brown at one of the ends, along with Chris Billups. Two-yard loss this time for Linscombe, second and 12. At about the 17, Linscombe again. They ride him for the first three offensive plays. He gets back to the 15, but it'll be third down and 10 from there. Tackle made by Chris Billups. He's a transfer from Pittsburgh State University. 6'2", 220-pound senior. Pittsburgh State on the last opponent that SMS played on a Thursday night. It was five years ago. Biggest crowd in the history of Southwest Missouri State, 16,672. But the Gorillas beat the Bears 9-8 game a lot of people would like to forget yeah. <laughs> but yeah it's five years since then third and 15 Porter very good rollout quarterback fumbles it out of bounds as he's hit from behind at the basically the line of scrimmage and the Bears are going to be looking at fourth down and a field goal situation now for Brian Long tackle made by the linebacker Vic Cummins second team all conference in the Lone Star Conference he is the team captain as we see on the replay, Ryan Porter rolling out to his left. And nobody open. And there's Cummins making the stop. Long from 32 yards. The holder is A.J. Porter. Last year, Long was 12 out of 23 in the field goal department. Very consistent on PATs. He puts this one up, and it's no good. So we'll remain scoreless, and East Central will take over three minutes in. Don, very little wind tonight, so the wind was not a factor on that field goal. He was kicking from hash mark left, a right-footed soccer-style kicker, and just pushed it to the right. East Central takes over at the 20. The ball comes back out to that point. Very little breeze and old glory tonight at the start. The students, as usual, a late arriving, but an arriving right crowd tonight, nonetheless. And Pete Darnell has the Tigers back on the field. It's given to Castleberry. 
Jerome Castleberry brings it up to the 23-yard line for a pickup of three. Darrell Robinson then on the stop for SMS. Castleberry easily. He's Central's best player. Over 1,300 yards rushing last year. First team all-conference. He is a preseason Division II All-America candidate. Second down and seven. Castleberry is from Winsboro, Texas, a senior. 1,308 yards, all-conference, all-region, third-team All-American last year. Second and seven, still early on, no score. There's a flag on the play, swing it out to Castleberry, down at the 30-yard line, but the penalty marker will take a look at. Thrown three yards behind the line of scrimmage. 99 times out of 100. That will be a holding call. And there is our referee tonight, Chuck Feeney, from El Paso, Illinois, making the call. And another look at this one. The penalty, though, against East Central will preclude this play. And Mr. Feeney has... Mr. Feeney wearing the microphone tonight. We're <laughs> always glad for that. Back to the 13-yard line for the Tigers. Four minutes expired, and it's second and 17 for the Tigers from Ada, Oklahoma. It's about 50 miles southeast of Oklahoma City. Up the middle, Castleberry. Back to the 18-yard line, straight up the gut. It'll bring up third and about 12 for the Tigers. Cedric Cotton, Joe Taylor in on the stop for SMS. Castleberry, big, strong running back. Just about broke away from Taylor before he was helped out on the tackle by Cotton. Got to the 19-yard line. We'll give him a gain of six. Third and 11 at the 19. Darnell rolling, looking, and he has his man, but out of bounds. It looks like it's going to be a completion, but after the pass was caught by James Quisenhunt, he stepped a foot out of bounds, and he's central well short of the first down, and we will see Jose Ramirez again in the punt. See on the replay, he had the one foot down, but then the left foot clearly out of bounds after he had the right foot in. It's a five-yard completion, but it's a punting situation for East Central. Anthony Sullivan, the only man back there for the Bears. Good kick back to the 31-yard line. Sullivan trying to get free and can't, and he loses two yards back to the 29. 45-yard punt, minus two on the return. Most of what you're hearing from our microphones are the East Central players and coaches fired up after that because the Bears, as they have since Randy Ball took over, moved over to the student side with their bench to be a little closer to the SMS kids over on the east side of the field. Brian Porter back to work for the Bears. Got an open man, but he overshoots. The target at the 32-yard line. Zach Deckant. And Don, again, that's just nerves. More times than not, Ryan Porter is going to complete that pass. But until you get a couple of starts under your belt, you'll make passes like that and make mistakes like that. Ryan Porter, at one time a red shirt at the University of Washington, came to SMS from San Bernardino Valley College in California. The Bears have a ton of transfers, as always, under Randy Ball on the roster again this year. Here is Eddie Linscombe trying to break free and can't, and he's stacked up at the 31. Eddie Linscombe, 984 net yards last year, eight touchdowns, played in all 11 Bears games, started six, carried the ball 154 times, and he is the feature back in this offensive set. Steve Ennis, his backup, is just about as talented, Mike. They've got some good ball handlers. No question, and we'll see Ennis before the night's over. So third and long, third and 
a long eight for the Bears. Fake of the handoff on the draw. Now wide open field for Porter and downfield. His pass is incomplete. Intended for Tony Hill. And the Bears will be looking at fourth down. And Robbie Kemp will be in to punt. Kemp replacing Eddie Pena, longtime Bears punter. <laughs> Robbie Kemp actually only played football his senior year of high school. Was a great kicker in junior college and had some fortunate to get him. Hits at the 32, free ball briefly, a flag goes down and down at the 35 yard line. And finger pointing after the play by Wisenhut. James Wisenhut. Down at the 36 and Chuck Feeney and his crew will talk it over. Nine minutes to go in the opening quarter, scoreless game. And here's Mr. Feeney. Fair catch apparently called for by Wisenhut, and that's why he was doing the finger pointing. And didn't see any hand go up there. Don't know also, you know, the new halo rule where you have to give the receiver about, you know, at least one or two steps. You can't be that close to the guy that's trying to catch the punt, so it could have been where he broke the, the halo. The first penalty against SMS tonight. They move it up to the 40. The game's still scoreless, six minutes in. Temperature in the mid-80s at game time. Very warm August evening right before Labor Day weekend on this Thursday night. Pitch to Castleberry, and he's dropped for a loss of four back at the 36. One of the four co-captains for SMS, the free safety Colin Johnson, a senior from Oklahoma City, makes a nice defensive stop. stop. Yeah, number 48, Cedric Cotton. Loss of three on the play. Linebacker Cedric Cotton in for some help. There, 48 to finish him off. East Central last year was six and four. So he said members of the Lone Star Conference. Up the middle to number 43, and that's John Morgan with the carry. Number 96, Carl Thomas. Got a six-yard gain out to the 43-yard line, so third down, about seven yards to go for East Central. They need to get to the 50 to pick up a first down. This is the first meeting between these schools in football. Darnell hits his man across the middle, Willie Lane, out at the 48-yard line. These two schools had a common opponent last year, Midwestern State, the team from Wichita Falls, Texas, that came in here on that stormy night and played a little over half the game before <laughs> lightning and heavy rain ended the game around midnight after many, many delays. East Central has to punt again on fourth and two. Just outside midfield, Jose Ramirez. What a good punter. It's going to hit at the five and bounce back to the seven and be downed right there. And the Bears take over deep in their own territory. 45-yard punt, no return. Tigers getting the benefit of the bounce there off this field turf. The Tigers still without a first down. Three plays and out, three plays and out, and three plays and out. And the Bears haven't done a whole lot except the big run by Eddie Linscombe on the game's first offensive play. So from their own eight-yard line now is where they've moved it to. Ryan Porter hands it to the motion man, Bino Gore. And he's out to the 12. You remember that name from the backfield last year starting flanker in this game a senior 58175 Bino Gore 
See him going around left end and the safety, Eric Johnson. Wraps him up and pushes him out of bounds at about the 12-yard line. Johnson, a 5'9", 175-pound sophomore from Lawton, Oklahoma. Gain of four, second down and six pairs at their own 12. Offset eye behind Porter this time. Gore angling in in motion. And the handoff goes to Steve Ennis. And he has a Bears first down at the 21. Steve Ennis from Flower Mound, Texas. Caught 17 passes last year for 202 yards. Carried 135 times for 706 yards. Had four touchdowns. And Don, this is a pretty run on his first carry of the season. Again, good blocking by the right side of the offensive line. And look at him just run over the cornerback, Wade Boyle. That's going to be a really fun competition to watch in the Bears' backfield with him and Linscombe this year. <laughs> Play action, Porter down the middle and incomplete. Eric Johnson in the secondary was the closest player to that one for East Central. And Ryan Porter 0 for 3, passing tonight, and he has overthrown on all three pass attempts. A play fake that time to Ennis to freeze the linebackers. Offensive line gave him plenty of time to throw the football, but pretty good coverage that time by East Central. Six and a half minutes left in the opening quarter, a scoreless game. Southwest Missouri State and East Central. Swing pass out to the left, goes to Mark Marcos. First down Bears out at the 34. For a guy who set the single season record for number of receptions with 59, number of yards, 905, you knew it was just a matter of time before Mark Marcos would make an impact in this game. That's his first catch of the night, and it's good enough for SMS's second first down of the evening as the completion goes for 13 yards. Plenty of time, just a little flare out pass to Marcos, caught it at the 20 and picked up 14 yards after making the catch. He caught four touchdown balls last year, Mark Marcos. Now here's Ennis again, who carries it out to the 40-yard line, a six-yard pickup on first down. Doug Terran makes the tackle from his safety spot, and Randy Ball in his fourth year at Southwest Missouri State. Coached in the Gateway at Western Illinois, of course, before coming here to Springfield. Porter to his right, hits Tony Hill, and Hill is hit at the 47, but another first down, and the Bears are marching it upfield, about to hit the midway point. Started this drive at their own eight. Right, and after missing on his first three pass attempts, he's completed two in a row. And again, great job by the offensive line to give Porter time to throw the football. Hill makes the catch at the 47, good for a seven-yard completion. And timeout is called by Southwest Missouri State. 5.21 to go in the first quarter, and will break. We are scoreless on opening night at SMS. Don West along with Mike McClure. Great to be with you from Plaster Sports Complex. Opening night for the Southwest Missouri State Bears in a scoreless game getting late in the first quarter. The Bears have brought the ball from the 8 to the 47 and have a first down with Steve Ennis and a flag going down as he gets only to the 48. The referee, Mr. Fien, threw the flag in from behind the offense. And the Bears are guilty of holding. Dennis Darnell's coaching resume includes stops at Missouri Western and St. Joe. He was an assistant at New Mexico for Dennis Francione. And the Lobos went from a two win per year average to a WAC champion under his guidance. They don't specify the number of the guilty party in football when the referee is mic'd up. But they mark it back to the 37. Dennis Darnell, 15 and 16 in his three seasons, but his team has kind of turned a corner, went six and five in 2000 and six and four last year. 
Porter rolling out. Got some time, some blocking. Ducks in and is dumped at the 40. Three-yard gain, but the Bears will still be looking at second and 17. Two good plays that time. Watch the block that Steve Ennis makes after the play fake, boom, to stop one linebacker. And then the thing that Porter had that last year Austin Mockerman didn't have, he's a very good running quarterback. And he was able to pick up three yards on what probably should have been a negative yardage play. Still picks up three and brings up second down and 17 for SMS. From their own 40, Ennis, the lone setback and three receivers out. Porter looking, and he's dumped. Lost two back to the 38. It'll be third and 19. That was the defensive left end, Justin Brown. That's who All built right, my house, Justin but I don't Brown. think it's the same Justin Brown. 6'3", 240 sophomore from Elgin, Oklahoma. Big as a house. Yeah, he is. I mean, he almost came in untouched. There he comes. Boom. Hey, you know, what does this East Central team have to lose tonight? Nothing. They're getting a nice paycheck for coming up here and getting a game under their belt before they play most of their opponents from Oklahoma. And at least defensively, they're playing awfully yeah. well. Now Porter's got some room. Gets to the outside to the 45 and out at the 47, but that'll be a Porter. full 10 yards shy of the first down, and the Bears will have to... Send out the punting unit again and Robbie Kemp. Again, a good job by the secondary for East Central because no receivers for SMS are open. So Ryan Porter has to keep the ball, trying to make what he can. And wisely stepping out of bounds there at about the 47-yard line after a gain of nine. So for the second time tonight, we see Robbie Kemp in punt formation. He's a JUCO product from Arizona, Scottsdale Community College. On angles inside the 10 and kicks back to the 8. And East Central will be pinned deep. 39-yard punt, no return. Nice job by Kemp to pin the Tigers inside their 10-yard line. So a 3.18 to go in the opening quarter, still scoreless. They were well above 10,000 tonight in the stands. They were expecting five figures for this game and got it. Beat Darnell back to work for the Tigers. Good fake in the pass. Incomplete. As he undershoots. Sam Hobson is tied in. Don, that's the first time tonight that the quarterback, Pete Darnell, has actually gone under center. Every snap has been out of the shotgun, so a little bit of a different look that time on offense. The tight end, Sam Hobson, was open, but the ball slightly underthrown. And Darnell is two for four passing tonight. Last year as a reserve, he completed nine out of 14 for 151 yards. Seven, Jerome this is Jerome Castleberry up to the 12. Making a stop over here, number 40, Brandon Chambers. Can't help number seven, Daryl Ward. The great tones of Rick Jester again, the SMS Bears longtime public address announcer. It'll be third and seven. This has been a very defensive-minded game on both sides, in particular on the Bears' side. They've really stuffed East Central. This pass is juggled and caught, but nowhere close to the first down. Lionel Wren makes the catch, but he never had control until he was belted. Loss of a yard back to the 11. Done. That's four offensive series for East Central. They still have not picked up a first down. Barely have any yards. Jose Ramirez to punt for the fourth time. And the Bears should turn excellent field position here. They may go after the punter. Ten men on the line. This is not a really good kick. 
It hits at the 43 and rolls back to the 45. Punts are going one way and then the other tonight. 34-yard punt, no return. So his punt tonight, 38, 45, 45, and now 34. And SMS will have their best starting field position of the night. If you're just joining us on the first play of the game for the Bears, their first offensive play, Eddie Linscombe ran the ball 44 yards down to around the East Central 15, but the Bears couldn't get any further and settled for a missed field goal. And that's been the biggest threat so far. This pass is caught. Looks like Tony Hill for a nine-yard gain down to the 36. He was bobbling it, but he was on his back. And he was still able to haul it into his stomach before it could be knocked away by a tiger. That's great concentration on the part of Tony Hill. Watch him scoop it up. And again, it never hit the turf. There it is up in the air, and he was able to pull it back down before Eric Johnson could slap it away. Second and less than a yard. Never know what you'll see in this situation. Look out, hand off to Gore coming around. Gore to the 20, 15, and dives to the 12. 24 yards for Bino Gore. I like the play call from Randy Ball. Again, play fake, end around to Bino Gore. He obviously has great speed. Good downfield blocking by SMS. There you see one of the offensive linemen, Jeff Bristol, who is one of the four co-captains. Gosh, he was 20 yards downfield making the block. Bristol, one of the anchors of the offensive line, which, along with Crockett Ladd, were a couple of the only returning players back, and it was a big question mark, but the new guys have responded very well. Porter this time is going to lose three back to the 14. Number 29, Big stop. That play was just slow and developing, and for one of the few times we've seen the defensive linemen and the linebackers get into the SMS backfield, and there's Vic Cummins, the team captain for the third straight year. He was a former walk-on for East Central, middle linebacker making the stop. Final seconds of the first quarter. Eddie Lenscombe back in the backfield, and that'll probably burn the, final, the, uh, the opening period. The Bears have the table set. They'll be looking at a third down play when we come back. At the end of one, no score. Number 94, Chris Gulf, makes the stop. Yeah, up number 54, Kwame Burton. Second quarter coming up. SMS and East Central are scoreless. The Bears knocking on the door. They have a big play coming up. It'll be third and 10 from just inside the 12-yard line, and the Bears knocking on the door, but they have not been able to solve this East Central defense for any points as yet. Into the second quarter, it's a pleasure to welcome back for his second year as part of our broadcast, Mr. Mike McClure. Thank you very much, Don. Third down and 10 for SMS at the Tiger 12. Split backfield, Porter rolling right, breaks away from one tackler, still in the center of the field, throws in the end zone, has a man open, touchdown SMS! Bino Gore, a 12-yard touchdown pass from Ryan Porter on third down and 10. What a job by Porter to get away and buy some time for Bino Gore to get open in the end zone. Well, watch him get away. I mean, this is, that is just incredible as he shakes away from Chris Phillips, the big lineman, and then still has the presence to get it to Bino Gore for the first points of 2002. Brian Long, 35 for 35, an extra points last year. He's made his last 46 in a row, the school record 51 by Travis Bronner. Good snap, good place. The extra point is up, and the kick is good. So the string continues. 14.53 to go in the first half. SMS 7, East Central nothing. Mike McClure, Don West at Plaster Sports Complex in Springfield. 
Ryan Porter's first collegiate touchdown pass goes to Bino Gore. Cap a six-play, 45-yard scoring drive. It took a minute, 53 seconds. Here's the kickoff by Brian Long. High end over end kick fielded by the Tigers at the four-yard line. Quickly out to the 20, 25, and a oh. big hit down at the 27-yard line. DeMarco Williams delivered the hit. On Stephen Langford. So it will be first and 10 for East Central at their own 27-yard line. Bears leading 7-0. SMS taking advantage of their best starting field position that last drive, only having a move at 45 yards, which they did in six plays. Quarterback Pete Darnell, the son of the head coach, back in the shotgun formation with a split backfield. And they'll send a man in motion to the near sideline. An option, quarterback keeper in Darnell will pick up a couple of yards out to the 30 before he's gang tackled by about four maroon jerseys. Again, this play a little slow in developing and quickly the SMS lineman in on the stop. One of the first one there is Oral McDonald who got a lot of playing time last year. Goes down as a three yard pickup for the quarterback Darnell. McDonald had 41 tackles last year. He's a senior on that defensive line from Winter Haven, Florida. I Smith's direction play in the backfield as the handoff goes to John Morgan. He's out near the first down marker at about the 38. And it will be enough for an East Central first down, and that is their first first down of the game. First down yard. Daryl Warren, who wore 32 last year and is wearing seven this year, making the stop, one of the four co-captains for SMS. After an eight-yard pickup. First and 10 Tigers. Here's a screen pass to the near sideline to Castleberry. Gets a block at the 45. And carries all the way out to the 50. So on two plays, two first downs for East Central University. Jerome Castleberry last year had 23 receptions, 225 yards, and three touchdowns, so he really can do it all for the Tigers. Preseason third-team All-America selection, Jerome Castleberry. About a gain of 13 yards as the Tigers have it in bear territory. An option play, nowhere for the quarterback to go, so he'll have to eat the football and be sacked for about a three-yard loss back to the 48. Quarterback sacked. Just too many maroon jerseys in all directions that time. Steve Watson, a transfer from the University of Minnesota, making the stop. It's also a play, Don, where it looks like the, the running backs for East Central are running too fast to the line of scrimmage, and Darnell has nobody to pitch the ball to. Right, it's a little bit out of sync. They're taking too direct of a path to the line of scrimmage instead of looping out a little bit and giving an option for the quarterback. Here's a pass downfield, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver at about the 37-yard line. The pass intended for number eight. As jumping high for that pass was Stephen Langford. Well, that's a play you have to execute. The pass is a little tall. And, well, too tall. That's, yeah. that's Darnell's fault there. But he was wide open. He had a first down. Darnell now three for six passing for just about 17 yards. The Bears have several of those 1A transfers on the roster again this year, along with Steve Watson from Minnesota, Matt Buckholz from Indiana, and others. Out of the shotgun formation, it looked like the center, Nick Claiborne, who's a first-team all-conference player on the shotgun, Don, it looked like the snap, frankly, went off his rear end. I mean, he snapped it too high and fell to the ground. It's a dead ball foul, so SMS will not have the option to decline it. And wouldn't have been able to fall on that play because right. it never really happened. Right. Just the second penalty against the Tigers, totaling 15 yards. That will back it up to the East Central 44. We have 12 minutes, 40 seconds to go in the first half. SMS leading East Central 7-0. 
on opening night 2002 at the Plaster Sports Complex. Again, shotgun formation. Fake the handoff to Castleberry. Little flare pass to the left side. The catch made by Willie Lane, the freshman from Frederick, Oklahoma. Well short of the first down on third and about 16. McDonald makes the stop after a pass completion of only three yards to the 47. So another punt for Jose Ramirez. He punted, what, four times in the first quarter? Right, right. Anthony Sullivan back to receive the punt. The line of scrimmage, the Tiger 47. Ten men on the line of scrimmage for SMS. Good, high, spiraling kick will send Sullivan all the way back. He's going to catch it at the goal line. Now he fumbles it. He'll have to bring it out. He's at the 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Spins down at the 35-yard line. An unbelievable return by Anthony Sullivan, Don, who made a huge mistake <laughs> by catching the ball when he did it. He should have been planted. Oh, but you always say that the 10-yard line is the magic spot, but he all went back to the goal line and fumbled it. A fortunate bounce right back to him. Randy Ball saying, no, 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 no. Good job. Good <laughs> he said, no, 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 and then go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> and he went off the plate to the 35. So there is a break for the Bears. A play that uh, never should have happened. They should have had it at the 20-yard line, but got a break so they'll take over on their own 35 porter back to pass screen pass far sideline the catch dropped by steve Ennis. i think maybe he heard footsteps looks like he took his eye off the football that's all it takes and that's what happened to Ennis that time steve Ennis caught 17 passes last year for 202 yards had the four rushing touchdowns as we get a look at some of the youngsters here in Springfield tonight. 11.39 to go in the first half. Bears up 7 nothing. Second and 10 for Southwest Missouri State at their own 35. Man in motion to the near sideline. Order with the handoff to Ennis. Big hole, 40. Out to the 43-yard line. About an 8-yard gain. David Walthall, the linebacker, in on the stop for the Tigers. So in has three carries for 23 yards, averaging about eight yards a carry so far tonight. And a big third down here for SMS. Want to keep the drive alive, keep the defense, give the defense some rest over on the sidelines. We are four minutes deep into the second quarter. Jay Steinbroner tight end to the right side. Here's the handoff to Ennis, tries to get outside, cuts the corner, has the first down, and carries out to the 48-yard line. First down yardage through there. Play designed to get about four yards, and that's what it gets for Ennis, and that's all they needed. Nice cut to get outside as Vic Cummins, the tackler for East Central. Third play of the drive for SMS. First and 10 at their own 48. Leading by seven with 10.30 to go in the first half. Movement on the defensive line. Porter back to pass, stays in the pocket, pass middle of the field. It is in and out of the hands of Steinbroner. Wide open at the 40 yard line. That pass is for number 85, James Steinbroner. Steinbroner last year in a backup role at tight end caught three passes for 78 yards and a touchdown and this one is not Ryan Porter's fault. Right there. <laughs> well, he can't go just place it in his hands, but that's about as close as you yep. can come. So second down and 10 SMS. Bears quickly to the line of scrimmage. Porter under center and offset eye. Here's the handoff to Eddie Linscombe. Inside the 45, down to the 44. So Linscombe with a seven-yard carry. Six carries, 55 yards for the senior running back. And again, there's Jeff Bristol leading the charge. I love it. That, that a hustling offensive lineman. We commented on one play in the first quarter when he was about 25 yards downfield making a block, and that time making a key block to spring Eddie Linscombe. That's 6'7", 274 to, to follow, too. <laughs> you got to like that if you're in the Bears' backfield. Third and a short three. The handoff on the right side to Eddie Linscombe. Has the first down. Carries down to the 36-yard line. 
A nine yard pickup for Lindscombe. And the Bears unofficially with their sixth first down of the first half. First and 10 for the Bears on the Tigers 35 yard line. Well, the Bears haven't broken any big plays like Lindscombe's first carry of the game for 44 yards, but they're getting the consistency down now. They're moving the ball steadily along now against this East Central defense. So Kevin Reed in on the stop for the Tigers. Second team all-conference last year, a sophomore from Muskogee, Oklahoma. First and 10 SMS at the Tiger 35. Again, an offset eye in the backfield. Porter gives it Ennis. Going to pick up maybe a yard to the 34-yard line before David Walthall makes the stop. Bears have a couple of road games after tonight. They'll get that extra couple of days since we're playing on Thursday night to get ready for Hampton University in Virginia. They'll be their next opponent a week from Saturday. And then they go to Lawrence, Kansas to meet the Jayhawks in two weeks. Which was the season opener last year up in Lawrence, which SMS lost. Here's Porter throwing far side. The catch made at the 25-yard line. Mark Marcos with a nice sliding catch. Number eight, Mark Marcos. Here's a look at the Bears' 2002 campaign. They go to Hampton in Kansas, home against Southeast Missouri State. Youngstown State is a home game, but it's not in yellow because it's not on our TV schedule. That'll be a part of the Fox Midwest package. And the rest on down the line once we get into the Gateway Conference season. Tigers. We may look at that again when we come back yeah. out of the break. Tigers take a timeout. We will as well. 8.30 to go in the first half. SMS 7, East Central nothing. You're watching SMS Bears football on Cable 36. By McClure, Don West back in Springfield. First down in 10 SMS at the Tiger 25. Bears up 7-0, eight and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. Porter back to pass, fires downfield, catch made by Marcos. He's brought down at the one. What a leaping catch by Mark Marcos. Good for 24 yards. That is what we're going to see a lot of this year out of number eight, Mark Marcos. This is not a perfectly thrown ball, but it's good enough for Marcos. Look at the elevation. Touchdown saving tackle by the safety, Doug Tarrant. For first, the moment, at least. Right, first and goal, handoff to the fullback, Nathan Skirman, who was a tight end last year. Touchdown, SMS. Nathan Skirman, out of pretty much necessity of needing a fullback, moved from an all-preseason conference, all-conference tight end position to the fullback. And he gets the call on first and half a yard, and, or first and goal, and gets the, the touchdown. Nine plays, 65 yards, bears up 13-0 with the extra point coming up. Brian Long, right-footed soccer-style kicker. One for one tonight, good snap, good placement. The kick is up, and it is deflected, deflected and no good. So that will end the string. He had hit 47 in a row. The school record was 51 in a row by Travis Bronner. Donnie was perfect last year, 35 for 35, but as you said, it looked like somebody got a hand on it. The record will stand for quite a while now. Bronner's 51 in a row. Something we didn't talk about in the pregame, the Bears have lost eight straight season openers. Five of those were on the road to Division 1A opponents. Their last opening game victory in 1993, 24-10, against Southeast Missouri State. That's, that's the bad news. The good news is, since the Bears have gone to Division 1AA in home openers, they are 14-4-2, including wins their last four years in a row. They have opened the season against those 1A opponents for a lot of the last eight or ten years. But that losing streak also includes that Pittsburgh State thing that we're trying to forget about. So tonight, maybe they'll break that up 13 to nothing now. Willie Lane back to receive the kick, which is upcoming from Brian Long. Bears up 13-0 with 8.08 to go in the 
first half on a very comfortable evening weather-wise here in Springfield on opening night. High end over end kick. Be fielded at the three yard three yard line, quickly out across the 10, 15, 20, 25, and tripped up at about the 26 yard line is Stephen Langford. Number eight, Stephen Langford on the return. So the Tigers will take over at about their own 26. Their last drive started at their own 27. They've started at their own 20, their own 20, their own 40, their own 8, their own 27, now their own 26. So their starting field position has not been anything to brag about tonight. Shotgun formation, the snap to Darnell, screen pass, catch made at the 30-yard line before SMS quickly in on the receiver John Morgan that's the fullback coming out of the backfield to make the catch about a five yard completion down to the 31 there you see Morgan blocking momentarily and then he's going to release two yards downfield makes the catch and the first bear to make contact with Cedric Cotton Steve Watson on the the end on this side on defense for the Bears got a tremendous jump off the line that time but just couldn't get the corner turned. So Darnell now five for eight in the passing department again out of the shotgun going to throw a screen pass near side that's Castleberry good hit quickly brought down at the 32 yard line. Kalen Williams a safety in on the stop. So just a two-yard completion out to the 33 to Castleberry. Good stick, as we said, by Williams. Another Arizona product from Tucson. Third down and three, Tigers at their own 33. SMS on top, 13 nothing. six and a half minutes to go in the first half. See if the Bear defense can hold as they send a man in motion from right to left. Darnell throws, catch made, good for a first down, and finally brought down at the 42-yard line. That's the tight end, J.J. Peak. From Ardmore, Oklahoma. Only caught five passes last year for 68 yards. A big target, 6'1", 240. Big wide body for a tight end. The completion good for nine yards. And I believe that's just the Tigers' second first down of the game. He's central from their own 42. Darnell will stay in the shotgun. Two wide receivers to the near side. The handoff to the fullback, Morgan. Carries to about the 48-yard line. Dragged down from behind by D'Angelo Edwards. John Morgan here. So Morgan, five yards to the 47. Number 97, D'Angelo Edwards. Up. Simple little handoff play up the middle to Morgan. Good blocking by the Tiger line. Six on the play. And a nice stop from behind by Edwards. Just the second carry of the night for Morgan for 13 yards. Tigers face second down at about five at their own 47. Man in motion to the near sideline. Pass is caught at the 48, close to a first down. Again, that's J.J. Peak. J.J. Peak. Chuck Feeney looks down to the far sidelines and will not even bring the chains in for a measurement. He says it's a Tiger first down. Stop the clock briefly to move the chains, and we're already down to 5.20 left in the second. East Central's moving the ball along yep. on this series. Seventh play of the series. Here's a pitch to the left side. That's Castleberry. No room to run. A nice job by the SMS defense. The ball came out. That's the official signal that the player was down. Castleberry will lose a yard back to the 49. Joe Taylor, among others, in on the stop. The fifth carry of the night for Castleberry, and he's picked up only six yards. Obviously, he was a key. It was that Carlos Banks that made the big stick. So second down and 11 East Central. Four and a half minutes to go in the first half. Bears up by 13. And the Tigers have second and 12. Here's a handoff. A hole on the right side at the 40. 
at Langford. He's at the 20 and knocked out of bounds by Carlos Banks. But a nice run by Stephan Langford. He'll pick up 29 yards. Again, he lined up as a wide receiver and took the handoff from the quarterback, Darnell. And then it's sheer speed from yeah. here because he outran three or four Bears in pursuit before they caught up with him at the 20. So Lankford with the 29-yard gain. This is the deepest penetration that the Tigers have had the football tonight. Shotgun, Darnell drops back, throws downfield, and overthrows his intended receiver in the end zone, James Wisenhunt. Kalen Williams step for step with him. That had to have been a perfectly thrown ball, and it wasn't. Clock has been running for quite a while, and it stopped now at 4.15. In the second period, Western Illinois, he, had his man beat. He had a step on Williams. Good pass by Darnell. Either Wisenhunt was going to catch it or nobody was going to catch it as he let him downfield. Here is the give to Castleberry. Breaks a tackle at the 15, still on his feet at the 10, and finally drug down at the 8-yard line. 12-yard pickup for Jerome Castleberry, and it's first and goal, Tigers. Number 22, Kenyon Cornejo, and number 48, Severin Boy, Potter. Castleberry is just Don't quick. Watch those feet. Look at the move. First and goal from the eight-yard line. He just shook Colin Johnson with no trouble with them fast feet. The prettiest run we've seen by Castleberry tonight. We're already inside four minutes. You see on the clock, 3.53 and counting. Bears up. 13-0, but it's first and goal. Tigers from the eight. Little shovel pass to Castleberry. Breaks a tackle, and he is into the end zone for an East Central touchdown. Touchdown, Tigers. Ball carried by number seven, Jerome Castleberry. From 12.40 to go in the second period. 11 plays, 74 Western yards, and you see some of the Tiger contingent making some noise. Little shovel pass to Castleberry. Broke one tackle at the four-yard line, and it was too late for the Bears. Eight-yard touchdown pass on the little shovel pass, forward pass. Here is the extra point attempt on the way. The kick is up, and the kick is good as Cody Finney Cody adds on the extra point. So a break in the action. 3.45 to go in the first half. SMS 13, East Central 7. Mike McClure, Don West back in Springfield as you see a look at the crowd of 11,254 here on opening night. The Bears on top of the Tigers, 13-7. Don, that was a very nice drive by East Central. Really was. They cap it with the shovel pass and they really put some consistency together offensively and found some solutions for what was giving them problems to the tune of zero first downs in the first quarter. And they are right back in the thick of this game now at 13-7. Jose Ramirez will kick off for the Tigers. Eddie Linscombe, along with Anthony Sullivan, deep for Southwest Missouri State. High end over end kick. It will be fielded by Linscombe at the 1. He's at the 5, 10, middle of the field, 15, and brought down at the 18-yard line. 17-yard return that time. Lost his footing, Mike, right at the end of that. And Number 94, Chris saw him kind of slam the ball down in disgust. He wasn't too happy with that one. Well, let's see what, S what SMS can do with 3.36 to go before halftime. See if they can answer the Tigers' touchdown. Ryan Porter, after missing his first three pass attempts, is now 5 for 10 for 62 yards through the air. And offset eye, Porter two-step drop, throws far sideline, catch made, but quickly dropped down at about the 22-yard line is Kaya Ferris. Number 19, Kaya Ferris, receiving that pass. Going to give him a forward spot out to the 24. Boyles. Boyles in on the stop, a five-yard completion. 
Ferris, a Missouri product from Fort Zumwalt South and St. Peter's. Here's a quick hitter up the middle that goes for very little yardage. Steve Ennis on the carry. Picks up two yards to the 26, and the Bears will face third down and a short three. Well, if SMS is held here, there's plenty of time for East Central to get the ball and tie or take the lead. Bears up 13-7, 2.38 to go in the second quarter. Third down and three SMS at their own 26-yard line. Again, an offset eye with Ennis along with Skirman in the backfield. Quarter, two-step drop, throws its tip. Catch made by Marcos for a first down at the 30-yard line. Great concentration by Marcos because it appears somebody got a hand on that pass. We'll see if you can see a deflection here. If not, it was awfully, <laughs> awfully close. Yeah. That was a little too fast to see if the trajectory changed on it. Fourth catch of the night for Marcos for 50 yards. Big first down for SMS. They're ninth in the first half. Man in motion, and it will be an end around. The give to Kaya Ferris breaks the tackle, still on his feet, and gets back to the 31-yard line. Number 19, Kaya well, Jake Ferris Clark had that one sniffed out for a five-yard loss Please for stop. East Central, but he did not finish what he started. And Ferris broke free and at least got it back to the line of scrimmage. A minute 45 to go of the first half. Did break the tackle there and pick up about six additional yards. Ferris not in too much of a hurry in getting to the line of scrimmage on second down and nine from their own 31. This time a split backfield. Porter, straight drop, throws downfield, has a man open. Nice catch made at the 40-yard line. Pass was underthrown, but James White made a nice adjustment on that thrown pass to make the catch. James White from Butte Junior College. He was a 98th seventh-round draft choice of the Pittsburgh Pirates. A 32-yard completion down to the 38-yard line. He and everybody else hope the Pirates are still playing tomorrow. And the Cardinals and the Cubs, and as you said, everybody. So that's the longest completion of the night for Ryan Porter down to the 38. This time, heavy pressure being applied by the Tigers, and Porter going to be fortunate just to get back to the line of scrimmage at the 38. He will get out of bounds, which is good, Don, because it stops the clock with 80 seconds to go in the first half. Yeah, at the very least on that play, you want to make the, the clock stop and get out of bounds, and he did do that. No gain, but the Bears still have time to stop and regroup now with 120 left in the half up by a six-point count. 13 to 7 Bears on opening night, a sea of students on the east side. See what Randy Ball calls here. No tight ends. They'll have two wide receivers to the left. That's Marcos and Gore. He'll split out wide to the right. Porter, screen pass to Zach Deckant. He's at the 30, down to the 29-yard line. Not enough for the first down. A flag from way back in the back corner. He was stopped by number 54, Kwame Ferguson. Kwame Ferguson in on the stop. They're on your left there. That's Ron Snodgrass yep. from right here in Springfield, a part of the crew in this game. They're talking with SMS center Crockett Ladd, so apparently the flag will be on the Tigers. Holding on the defense, on the eligible receiver, 10 yards, first down. Well, that helps the cause out a lot. Holding on an eligible receiver. The, the penalty is way away from the ball here. There's Deckett making the catch. They'll take the penalty and move the football from the 38, which was the line of scrimmage, down to the 28, and replay the seventh play of the series. Down clock, to a minute. Yeah. Clock running. We've got exactly one minute to go before halftime. Bears up 13-7. First and 10 SMS at the East Central 28-yard line. Here comes the blitz. Porter throws near side. Catch made by Ennis. He's at the Limston Raiders at the 20. Needs to get out of bounds and is slung out of bounds at the 16-yard line. It's a great read that time by Ryan Porter. 
Watch the middle linebacker come straight up the gut and put the pressure on Porter. And there is a wide open Linscombe, and he's got one man to shake. And he gets about 10 extra yards before being slung down. And East Central is going to take a defensive timeout with 47 seconds left. An 11-yard pass completion that time to Eddie Linscombe. So after Porter got off to the rough start passing, missing his first three attempts, now 7 for 12. We're right at about 110 yards so far here in the first half. Don, still plenty of time. 47 seconds to go before halftime. No need to push the panic button. Kind of a break to have East Central call yeah. a timeout for you here. Because the Bears are just 16 yards out. As Don talked about, the schedule, the Bears' next ball game, Saturday, September 7th, in Hampton, Virginia, against Hampton University. Then one week later, September 14th, up in Lawrence, Kansas, against the Kansas Jayhawks. And then our next telecast here on Cable 36 will be Saturday, September 21st, when the Southeast Missouri State University Indians from Cape Girardeau come into Springfield for a 7 p.m. kickoff. That Hampton game next week, that is a 1-double-A opponent. And then Kansas, of course, 1-A. So the Bears run the gamut their first three games, and then it's 1-double-A starting with right. SEMO and then the conference from there on out. So here we go, first and 10 SMS at the Tigers' 16-yard line. No tight ends, two wide receivers to the right. Porter rolling right, now reverses his field. Still scrambling, still scrambling at the 35, still on his feet. Boy, somebody has to be open downfield. He's at the 25, 20, and stepped out of bounds at about the 20-yard line. It's going to be about a three-yard loss, but it chews up about 13 seconds on the clock. The thing about that is there was nobody open. East Central had tremendous pass coverage. And Porter is just all over the place. Watch his 100-yard dash that he runs right here. 100 <laughs> yards east and west instead of north and south. But nobody's open through the whole sequence. As Tigers call another defensive timeout. Eric Johnson, the defensive back, chasing Porter out of bounds. And you know who's glad for the timeout? Porter, so he can catch his breath. Sure. Long ways to run for a three-yard loss. This will be the ninth play of the drive coming up for Southwest Missouri State. It started at their own 19-yard line. A 32-yard pass completion to James White has been the big play so far in this drive. If you just joined us, it was a scoreless first quarter, and on the first play of the second quarter, Bino Gore caught a 12-yard touchdown pass from Ryan Porter to put the Bears on top 7-0. With 8.08 to go in the second quarter, Nathan Skirman a one-yard touchdown run. The extra point kick was blocked. Bears led 13-0, and with 3.45 to go in the half, Jerome Castleberry, an eight-yard pass from Quarterback Pete Darnell, Cody Finney added the extra point, and that's where we stand. Bears on top of the Tigers, 13-7, 34 seconds to go in the second quarter. SMS will have the football. Second down at about 15 yards from the East Central 21-yard line. Porter under center, two wide receivers to the left side. That's Hill and Bino Gore. Up at the top of the screen, it's Ricky Ricks, and they're going to throw to Ricks, and it's incomplete. Ricks ran a down and in, and Porter threw a down and out. There's our first look at Ricky Ricks. Don, have we heard a lot about this transfer from South Carolina? How could Lou Holtz get this? let this guy get away? He hasn't been with the Bears all that long. It came, came at the end of preseason drills. But, yeah, remember that name, and it's a, not a... Hard name to remember, Ricky Ricks. <laughs> you like that one. I like Mark Marcos and Ricky Ricks. <laughs> Third down and 15 SMS with 30 seconds to go in the first half. They're on top, 13-7. Play fake by Porter. Throws into the end zone intended for Ricks, but it's incomplete as he threw it out of the back corner of the end zone. And we'll see if the field goal unit comes on. Again, not much wind uh, a factor tonight, although there is maybe a little more of a breeze than there was at the start, but still not much, and it's going to be about a 
38-yard attempt for Brian Long, hash mark right. He missed a 32-yard field goal attempt, hash mark left in the first quarter. 12 for 23 in field goals last year. This one from 38 yards. Field goal is on the way, and it's no good. Not even close. Long is not having a memorable first half. The snap looked good, but the kick just barely got over the line of scrimmage. So 21 seconds to go before halftime, and East Central will take over at their own 21. First and 10 for East Central on their own 21-yard line. I don't think we'll see anything too fancy here from quarterback Pete Darnell. That his father is the head coach. His mom's birthday is today. His dad and native of El Dorado Springs. Former SMS player, graduated from SMS in 1969 and was a member of three Bears football teams in 67, 68, and 69. You know what? He tried to call time out there, and I don't think they had one left. And so, yeah. Okay. I thought it might be a delay, but... He wanted time out there. Saw two alumni from East Central that caught my name. Former New York Jets player Mark Gastineau and professional golfer Dr. Gil Morgan, uh -huh. former Tigers. Five-yard penalty back to the 16. Here is a handoff going for very little gain out to about the line of scrimmage, and that's probably going to be the last play of the first half as Jerome Castleberry picks up no gain. We're winding down inside seven seconds, and the teams are heading for the locker room. So the first half comes to a close in Springfield with our score, Southwest Missouri State 13, East Central 7. You're watching SMS Bears football on Cable 36. Halftime at Plaster Sports Complex as the Pride Band gets set for its first performance of 2002 with 11,000 and change in the stands here this evening on opening night. The Bears with a 13-7 lead, all the scoring in the second quarter. In fact, East Central did not have a first down in the first quarter. The Bears had a good scoring chance right after the first offensive play, and Eddie Linscombe 44-yard run down to the 15-yard line of the Tigers. But after failing to get any closer, Brian Long missed the 32-yard field goal. And it was scoreless after one quarter. In fact, it was scoreless until the opening play of the second quarter, which is what you're looking at right here, a 12-yard pass to Bino Gore from Ryan Porter that came on the opening play of the second quarter. Here is Jerome Castleberry with the only points on the board for East Central. That came after... Nathan Skirman's one-yard run made it 13 to nothing at the 808 mark in the second, and then Castleberry with that shovel pass from Pete Darnell to make it 13-7 after one of the SMS extra points was deflected and no good. So this is a very competitive game, maybe more so than we expected. And Don, I'm surprised that this game one of the season there were no turnovers in the first half, no interceptions, no fumbles, and you really expect that in an opening game, but we have not had any turnovers in tonight's football game. Long missed a 38-yard field goal late in the half, and so it remains a one score, if you will. First half, just a six-point margin, and the Bears with a 13-7 lead down the locker room. And I'll tell you, at, at times, East Central, on their scoring drive at least, moved the ball very well. That was the best series that we saw Jerome Castleberry have in the first half. He is obviously the key to their offense. Pete Darnell, unofficially, we'll get the official numbers here in a little bit, but we had him 8 for 12 passing, so not bad for his first collegiate sure. start. But the fact that they picked up just three first downs says a lot about the SMS defense. Especially in the first quarter. Mm -hmm. Here at the half, it's 13-7. The Bears lead the Tigers of East Central on opening night. We'll have a look at the stats and second half action coming up a little later when we continue right after this. Halftime at Plaster Sports Complex.
complex. Southwest Missouri State and East Central doing battle. The Bears lead 13 to 7. And now let's go down to the field for the halftime show of the Pride Band. Central 7, ready for the start of the third quarter after the halftime show of the Pride Band. Take a look at some of the first half numbers as we come back. East Central had six first downs in the opening half. The Bears had 14, rushing yards 128 for SMS, 78 for the Tigers. Ryan Porter threw for 126 yards. East Central 55 through the air. Total yardage 254 to 133 for SMS. The Bears were penalized twice for 18 yards. East Central four times for 31 yards. Time of possession almost a dead heat. 15 minutes, 14 seconds for SMS and 14.46 on the East Central side. SMS individually had 64 yards of rushing for Eddie Linscombe on seven carries. And Stephen Langford was Langford was the leading rusher for East Central with only one carry at 29 yards. Jerome Castleberry held to 23 yards on eight carries. So Don, you look at total yardage, SMS 254, East Central 133, bears almost twice as many yards, yet it's still just a six-point game at 13-7. The two missed field goals by Brian Long in the first half are huge right now. Bears will receive the second half kick. Eddie Linscombe and Sullivan again. Anthony Sullivan back deep. It'll be Linscombe from the three. To the 20, following Sullivan, gets a block and about five extra yards as he falls ahead to the 32. Eddie Linscombe just running over Doug Karen at about the 30-yard line, picking up three or four more additional yards. And decent field position for Southwest Missouri State to open up the second half at their own 32. Linscombe had that 44-yard run on the first play from scrimmage for the Bears to boost his per carry average up to above nine. But after that carry, it was just six for 20 yards. So that one big carry skewed the whole number for Linscombe. He carries it to the 34 for two yards. Linebacker Kwame Garrison, a junior from Paris, Texas, in on the stop. Had 117 tackles last year. Just a two-yard pickup for Linscombe, who had seven carries for 64 yards in the first half. Second down and eight. Porter, lots of time, and it's intercepted. There's the game's first turnover, and it's picked off by Eric Johnson, and he brings it back to the Bears 28. And the East Central charges are fired up. It appeared the offensive line gave enough time for Porter to throw. It did. Just never saw Johnson 
who picks it off and returns it to the FMS 28-yard line. Brought it back 15 yards in traffic after making the interception. So there is the first turnover of the game and a big one for East Central. They're now 28 yards away from tying or taking the lead in the game. Play action fake to Castleberry. Swing it to the 23-yard line and down to the 20 for Willie Lane. And an eight-yard pickup, second down and two. Nice play fake to freeze the linebackers as they're keying on Castleberry. That's who he faked the handoff to, Lane. Nice catch, nice move inside to pick up eight yards. Castleberry and is the lone setback with Darnell out of the shotgun. Hand off to Jerome Castleberry. From the 20 down to the 16, a gain of four, and that is good enough for the first down. Or, or Ivy Pittman, the defensive end, a junior, transfer from Southwest Mississippi Community College in on the stop. So that's quickly a first down for the Tigers. They picked up six first downs in the first half compared to the Bears' 14 as the Tigers trying to take advantage of the game's first turnover. First down, East Central. Driving for a potential lead. Wide open receiver to the right is John Morgan. He's down to the 10. Pickup of six. And East Central moving the ball very well after the interception. Drive started at the 28. And the receiver just wide, wide open. Secondary has to get a little more closer to those receivers. Darnell two for two in the third quarter. 12 for 17 in the game passing. Second and four from the 10. Swing it to Castleberry, and he just couldn't hang on. It's an incomplete pass. Boy, and Randy Ball might wish that was a catch and a fumble because it bounced right into the hands of Colin Johnson, who could have raced about 82 yards for an SMS touchdown. And would have without being touched, but Castleberry did not have control. See how many steps he takes after he catches the ball. Nope, he never did. Never did have control of the football. That's really a pretty big break for East yeah. Central because <laughs> he's trying to get control. He just can't. Third down from the 10, third and four. Across the middle, there's the catch, and down to the one-yard line, John Morgan again, first and goal, East Central. Willie Lane, the receiver, they kind of cleared okay. everything out, and Lane came in as a secondary receiver. Watch this. Here's the tight end going down the middle. SMS is following him. Here's the second guy coming through, and nobody has Lane. Touchdown saving tackle for the time being by Richard Pickens. So Lane for nine yards, and it's first and goal. Tigers from the one. Castleberry trying to drive it across, and no signal. Might have got a couple of feet, but not the full yard. We'll see where they spot it. It'll still be inside the one. Kind of just follow whoever you can up the middle. And no room for Castleberry that time. Second down and about half a yard. They'll try it again. Castleberry touchdown. So we are tied for the moment in East Central, a chance to take the lead on the extra point. So the first turnover of the game, the interception thrown by Porter, picked off by Johnson, and the Tigers are able to capitalize. Seven plays, 28 yards, a one-yard plunge by Jerome Castleberry, who had 12 rushing touchdowns last year. He had a touchdown pass in the second quarter, now has a touchdown run here in the third quarter and the Tigers will go for two. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Timeout SMS. The 
left in the third quarter, and we'll see how they come back out after this timeout. But you need one point for the lead. Why would you go for yeah. two? Do you think maybe they lined up that way to force SMS to burn a timeout? Because well, obviously the Bears weren't expecting that formation. Absolutely. So maybe a little trickery from Dennis Darnell. Castleberry again with his second touchdown. He received a shovel pass for a score in the first half. After SMS had gone up 13 to nothing, now East Central has scored the next 13 points, and they have one or maybe two mm -hmm. at least uh, to attempt here coming up. Better look at the crowd again, 11,254 here on opening night. I love football in the fall. Really, the evening, it's very comfortable. November, it's freezing cold. August and September, it's beautiful. And October. Now they're going to line up to kick the extra point. I think what they did worked. Yeah, I really think they were trying to get SMS to burn a timeout. Here's Cody Finney. He was 14 of 17 last year in conversion kicks. It is up and it is good, and East Central has the lead with 11.24 left in the third, 14 to 13. 